Welcome to this presentation on BIM for FM and Kobe. This is a shortened version of a presentation I gave at the recent Revit and IFC Kabukasdark, Revit and IFC User Day. From that presentation, I have extracted several slides that I gave on BIM for FM at Sydney Opera House, and will instead refer you to some websites with interesting information on this topic. It is unfortunate that facility management has come so late to BIM. The use of BIM is becoming standard practice for design and construction. But without the engagement of facility management, BIM models will be frozen at practical completion and worthless forever after. Fortunately, there are some notable exceptions to this. In addition to presenting my research into the use of Kobe, I will be talking about the BIM for FM project at Sydney Opera House. This initiative that I launched back in 2004 illustrates the value of BIM for FM and how owners of existing assets can adopt BIM. Why is BIM for FM important? Facility managers spend a lot of time looking for information. When a building is new, there is a very large pile of drawings and manuals to read and several gigabytes of data to digest. Much of this information has to be manually entered into at least one asset management system. And the information can rarely be found when it is needed, especially if that information spans several disciplines. All this costs time and time equals money. BIM for FM and Kobe can solve many of these problems and more. In addition, as we move into an era of smart buildings and smart cities, reliable and current building information will increase in value. It will be the facility manager's job to ensure that operational BIM model is kept up to date. A challenge for facility managers is to integrate BIM with existing asset management data. Kobe may be the solution to this. The basis of my presentation is a piece of research I completed at the end of 2017 whilst working for the Sustainable Built Environment National Research Centre at Curtin University in Perth, Australia. The theme of our research was the whole of life value of constructed assets through digital technologies, in particular the use and impact of BIM through the design, construction and operation of constructed assets. One line of research investigated the possible use of Kobe by asset owners to define their asset information requirements, a sort of reverse engineering of Kobe, which is primarily used for the exchange of information between the construction and operational asset lifecycle phases. Construction Operations Building Information Exchange Exchange is the most important word here. It describes exactly what Kobe does. Kobe is primarily intended for software application to application information exchange through digital technologies. Kobe is not an operations manual nor an asset register to be read by humans for day-to-day -day facility management. The data contained in Kobe tables can be interrogated to answer a range of questions, such as a number of occurrences of an asset type, maintenance frequency and performance parameters. This is best done within an asset management system that can import the Kobe data rather than by manipulating data within Kobe. Kobe itself is not an operational tool or database. Its primary purpose is to facilitate the exchange of data. Kobe provides a standard framework for the collection and collation of asset information and supports the exchange of asset information between software applications. A Kobe data model provides the core information necessary to manage and operate a facility, such as an asset register and preventative maintenance schedules. There may come a day when we no longer need an exchange system, when BIM and facility management are fully integrated. In the meantime, Kobe has been adopted by national and international organisations as an appropriate framework for asset information exchange. What is Kobe? For the benefit of those unfamiliar with Kobe, I will make a brief detour into an explanation. Though Kobe is designed to be application neutral, it is most easily demonstrated in a spreadsheet workbook format, such as Microsoft Excel, using a set of linked tables. Each table holds information describing one particular aspect of a building, such as a list of all the rooms in the space table, 
or items of plant in the type and component tables. The facility, floor, space, zone, type, component and system tables are used to document the as-built asset information for a facility. The job, resource and spare tables are used to detail maintenance tasks. The common tables provide additional information and can be used to define data and terminology used in other tables. COBE data is captured progressively as a facility passes through the design and construction phases. The design team enters information such as floors, spaces and types of materials and plant. The construction team adds specific information including plant items in the component table, maintenance schedules in the jobs table and spares to be held in the spare table. This accumulative and collaborative process eliminates duplication and ensures a consistent approach to asset information, collection and collation. The completed, Toby Co the completed COBE tables record the facility at a particular point in time. Typically, that would be at practical completion. However, COBE tables could also be populated by data obtained during an asset audit. Now let's look at COBE tables. Each COBE table follows a similar format. The columns represent defined fields and each row a data set for a given facet. A typical COBE table is illustrated. The first four columns in each table generally follow the same pattern. The first column is a name, a unique identifier or key field for each row of data and is used as a link between the tables. The second column, created by, is the name of the person updating the row and is drawn from the contacts table. The third column, created on, is the date of the most recent data update. And the fourth column, category, links to a pick list table to a national or international classification system, such as Uniclass 2015 in the UK or Omniclass in the USA. Each field is color coded to indicate the source or requirement for data. Yellow cells are mandatory fields in which data must be entered. The salmon coloured cells are also mandatory and linked to another table. Data entered must match the source exactly. The purple cells provide information to link to an external system. And the green cells represent additional information specified by the asset owner. Using a COBE table. COBE tables provide generic fields for data entry. They do not specify the exact information required. When using COBE, it is not sufficient to simply state provide asset information in a COBE compliant format. To use COBE successfully, a client's asset information requirements must clearly state what information is to be included in COBE. To do this, the client should consider how they will use the COBE information model. The primary use of COBE is to exchange information into an asset management system as a, therefore, as a minimum, COBE should contain all maintainable assets, the spaces in which they are located and associated maintenance jobs. Thus, COBE might contain air conditioning plant and fire extinguishers, but not details of floor slab construction or electrical cabling. If new building information delivered via COBE is to align with the information in an existing asset management system, then the client must clearly set out the terminology that they want used. Within COBE, the client can create pick lists of terms to be used with particular fields and thus ensure that their existing asset lexicon is used in the creation of the digital model for a new asset. An analogy might be made with a painting by numbers set. The blank set of COBE tables is the canvas and outline to which the numbers need to be added to resolve which color goes in which cell this is one role of the asset information requirements document. The design team and contractor can then fill in the picture with the required colours or information to complete the COBE tables. As with a BIM model, there should be only one set of COBE files so as to create a single point of truth. Also, the structure of the tables should not be changed and each set of COBE tables should contain only one building. These simple rules combined with the schedule of asset information requirements, avoid duplication of information and the confusion caused by bespoke systems. For clients with an existing asset management system, 
Information in that system will provide a starting point from which to develop their asset information requirements. This was one of the issues investigated in our research project, Whole of Life Value of Constructed Assets Through Digital Technologies. Whole of Life Value of Constructed Assets Through Digital Technologies. This research project was undertaken by the Sustainable Built Environment National Research Centre over 2016 to 2017. The project is the latest in a series of projects investigating digital technologies and particularly BIM. You can find details of all the projects on the centre's website. Whole of life value of constructed assets through digital technologies sought to 1. Develop an online benchmarking tool to evaluate the benefits of using BIM and 2. To investigate the influence of disruptive technologies on constructed assets. I will talk more about the overall research outcomes later. For the moment, I would like to return to Kobe and talk about one of our case studies. The Kobe case study posed the question, can a housing data set be used to create a data dictionary to specify the client's asset information requirements for Kobe? Existing asset owners will naturally want to incorporate information from BIM models created with new assets into their existing asset management system. The case study investigated the practicalities of translating the structure of the existing housing asset information databases into a Kobe template format to facilitate the exchange of information with BIM models generated in the procurement of new housing assets. Housing information was used because one of the centre's partners gave us access to their asset management data sets. However, the lessons learned should be applicable to all built assets. The Housing Services Department, covered in the case study, manages more than 50,000 rental properties. The study was undertaken in three steps. First, review the department's data requirements and structure. Two, map department data requirements to the Kobe framework. And three, establish an example Kobe template. The purpose of the Kobe template is to establish a pro forma into which asset information can be entered using the department's preferred terminology. This ensures that information created in a BIM model for new assets will align with the existing asset management system. Primarily, this is achieved by developing pick lists that can be used to define and limit the terms that may be entered into a field in a Kobe table. For example, floor names can be established in a number of ways as illustrated in the slide. By establishing a pick list of floor names, the client can specify the terminology to be used by the design and construction teams such as is ground floor to be labelled ground floor or floor one. To ensure continuity with the underlying Kobe framework, no changes were made to the Kobe tables. Unused fields were left in place, but these may well be required with new construction projects. The pick list and attribute tables were used to ensure a consistent data lexicon corresponding to the department's established taxonomy. The department provided eight documents that used housing asset information for either property management, maintenance or reporting purposes, and two data dumps from the department's property management and facility management databases. Our first task was to identify a structure to the department's asset data. This proved particularly challenging with only a partial correlation between the terminology used across the documents and data sets that contained approximately 100 data types 2,000 data descriptions and 20,000 individual data entries. Defining facility. We initially identified a three-tier hierarchical structure to the department's housing assets, as illustrated in this slide. The principal housing asset is the rental unit that forms the basis of all tenancies. A building unit represents the building containing one or more rental units, such as an apartment block. A business entity is similar to a plot of land and may contain one or more building units and common property such as gardens and car parking. To ensure that information exchange follows a consistent methodology, it was necessary to establish rules so that rental units, building units and business entities are always handled in the same way within the Kobe template. In accordance with Kobe practice, each set of tables should contain only one building. In terms of housing assets, 
This means that building unit and not rental unit must form the basis of any Kobe workbook. Rental units must be addressed as zones, each set of rooms forming a rental unit brought together as a zone in the zone table. Common property, unique to a building unit, including external areas, can be treated as spaces and zones within that building unit's Kobe workbook. Whilst a business entity may contain several buildings, the entity is primarily focused on property common to all buildings, for example a shared car park. Since a Kobe workbook can contain only one building, it is necessary for each business entity to be presented in a separate Kobe workbook, together with the spaces unique to that business entity. To avoid a space or zone appearing in more than one Kobe workbook, it is necessary to establish additional rules. A space or zone should be wholly contained within the facility detailed in the Kobe tables and uniquely linked to that facility. For example, a business entity contains two buildings, each with a garden, but sharing a car park. Each garden would appear in the Kobe tables for the building unit with which it is associated. The car park belongs in the Kobe table for the business entity because it is unique to the business entity but not to either building unit. To accommodate the housing asset information structure within the Kobe template, rules as described must be included in the template. So we establish the following. Each building unit must be represented in a separate Kobe workbook. Each business entity must be represented in a separate Kobe workbook. Each rental unit must be identified in the zone table with the corresponding spaces. And each space and zone should be unique to and wholly contained within one facility. Property management. Property management is a core business of the housing department and therefore needs to be addressed in the Kobe tables. Similar analysis to that described previously led to the conclusion that an additional table would be needed. This table would hold data necessary for property or rental management, such as address, number of bedrooms, number of beds, and facilities for tenants with disabilities. For each table, we prepared a data dictionary sheet that detailed the properties of each data field. That data dictionary could well be included in the asset information requirements document. Strictly in Kobe terms, a new table cannot be introduced. So although the new property table uses a Kobe type template, it is strictly speaking an external system and reference as such from the tables in the Kobe framework developed in this case study. Our next task was to identify the assets to be included in Kobe. This was complicated by data that in Kobe is held in separate tables and fields being combined into a single field in the department's data sets. For example, rental unit bathroom one tub contains a zone, the rental unit, a space, bathroom, and an asset type category, the tub. We also found discrepancies in the use of terminology. For example, the terms basin and hand basin refer to the same type of asset and should therefore use the same terminology. These problems are by no means unique to housing assets. Similar issues with inconsistent terminology were one of the problems I encountered at Sydney Opera House. Nonetheless, the housing data sets did provide a basis from which to create a schedule of Kobe asset information requirements. By disassembling the department's asset data, we were able to reverse engineer how each data item translated to a Kobe table and field, at the same time identifying which assets should be included in Kobe. By creating a list of all assets that in the department's database were tagged to bathrooms, we were able to develop a Kobe asset schedule. For example, for each bathroom, include the following assets, shower tray, tub, basin, shower, screen, floor covering, and wall finishes. Note that this list does not include all the assets that might be found in the bathroom. It does not need to. A Kobe specification would only cover those assets in which the client has an interest. Generally speaking, all the maintainable assets. An alternative approach might be to use a classification system such as Uniclass 2015 to specify the classes of asset to be included in the Kobe tables. 
this idea needs further investigation. And so, to the conclusions that we can draw from the case study. Firstly, existing asset data can be used to create a Kobe template. Secondly, pick list and attribute tables are the key to defining the terms to be used. Thirdly, a data dictionary explains the use of the Kobe template. Fourthly, additional tables may be needed, although strictly these sit outside the Kobe template. And lastly, mapping existing asset information to Kobe is disruptive, but at least it only has to be done once. We did not have time to develop a complete Kobe template for the housing department's asset information. However, it was apparent that creating an information dictionary and rules from existing asset information is a complex and challenging task. This task is likely to disrupt existing ways of working and require the adoption of a standardised approach. Again, this is consistent with my early experience at Sydney Opera House. A standardised approach to both asset information requirements and asset information exchange offers many benefits. There has been some discussion as to how far Kobe tables can be modified before they cease to be Kobe and merely something based upon Kobe. It is rightly argued that any significant departures from the original Kobe framework will lose the versatility of a generic approach to information exchange. In the case study, no changes were made to the underlying Kobe framework. The Kobe template we developed uses pick lists and attributes to establish the terminology to be used. We added a table for property management information, and whilst this follows the Kobe format, it technically sits outside of Kobe. The successful use of Kobe should eliminate reliance upon large quantities of paper documents and duplication between consultants and contractors. The time-consuming manual entry of data into asset management systems will be replaced by the exchange of digital information. The ability to check asset information for completeness will be greatly enhanced. Overall, all companies in the design, construction and operation of assets will benefit from greater efficiency and effectiveness in the collation of asset information by using Kobe. Arguments have been made against the use of Kobe on the basis that it is complicated and duplicates information that is available elsewhere. These are somewhat fatuous arguments unless one accepts that a BIM model is only for design and construction and not for asset management. If BIM models are to have value beyond practical completion, then the information they contain must be usable by asset management systems. Kobe provides a mean of both defining asset information requirements and exchanging information between a BIM model and an asset management system. Before talking about Sydney Opera House, I should clarify that I worked there as a facility manager and facilities director from 2000 to 2008. And in 2004, initiated what was to become BIM for FM. Since leaving Sydney Opera House, I have followed the development of BIM for FM with great interest. In my most recent role as a researcher, I was able to revisit BIM for FM at Sydney Opera House. BIM for FM at Sydney Opera House began with a problem. Too much uncoordinated building information spread across a number of disparate systems in both hard and soft copy. An opportunity arose to work with the Cooperative Research Centre for Construction Innovation on two projects into BIM and FM, which gave us access to experts across Australia. This led to a vision of being able to walk around Sydney Opera House with a handheld digital device and being able to call up any asset information document that was required. The BIM for FM journey has taken several years and still continues today. It has been driven by the passion of staff who took the opportunity to work with a leading research organisation and develop the use of BIM through a series of renewal projects at Sydney Opera House. The links shown on this slide will lead you to several detailed presentations on BIM for FM at Sydney Opera House. To bring order to the vast volume of building information at Sydney Opera House and ensure that new projects were delivered to consistent design, construction and information standards, a suite of guidelines were developed. 
They guidelines detail requirements for consultants and contractors. Importantly, they also explain the principles behind the building information legacy so that future Sydney Opera House staff can understand how and why the guidelines were developed. In addition to the production of guidelines, a coordinated controlled survey network was established with 169 brass plaques installed throughout Sydney Opera House. Wherever you are, you should be able to see at least one marker. These provide survey control points for the numerous traditional surveys as well as the ever-increasing library of point cloud surveys. Every new drawing must align with the survey network to allow as-built work to be verified and new digital information to be accurately added to the existing data. The time taken to develop a robust set of guidelines and a survey network now lets Sydney Opera House require a set of digital deliverables at project completion. To bring together all the Sydney Opera House digital systems, Echodomus was commissioned to provide a bespoke web-based graphical interface accessing all the database of the building through one LOD 200 to 250 model. The interface gives access to maintenance systems and scheduling, building systems, asset and property management information, and space and event management data. Utilising the Echodomus application program interface, a query can be made that draws upon data from various repositories, which is then presented in a single interface, the BIM for FM system. All the information is in one place, which is the ideal operational environment. The BIM for FM journey at Sydney Opera House started several years ago. However, the principles from which it has been developed are solidly based on practical and achievable outcomes. The uptake of the system has only been limited by the reluctance of the construction industry to embrace change. This is a classic example of a client, in this case Sydney Opera House, leading change. A theme that is returned to time and time again in research conducted by the Sustainable Built Environment National Research Centre. The importance of the client leading innovation. To conclude, I would like to briefly reflect on the two questions posed by the research project. What are the benefits of using BIM? And what is the influence of disruptive technologies on constructed assets? It is difficult to directly measure the benefits of BIM. The BIM value benchmarking tool has had limited uptake, which possibly reflects the high level of sensitivity to information sharing in the Australian construction industry. Nonetheless, there are many reports and case studies that suggest BIM is delivering a positive benefit to the design and construction sectors. We recommend the use of a benefits management framework to clients to ensure that they get value from using BIM. Whether or not these benefits will extend to facility management will depend upon client abilities to extract asset and facility management data from the model and to maintain the BIM model over the lifetime of the building. The Sydney Opera House BIM for FM project and our housing case study illustrate some of the challenges and benefits of adopting BIM for FM. In this context, COBE may have a critical role to play in both defining asset information requirements and facilitating the exchange of data between a BIM model and asset management system. However, the effort to required to deliver the benefits of BIM for FM are likely to be disruptive in both the resources required to initially set up BIM for FM and of existing systems and work practices that will have to change. Economists theorise that innovation can be disruptive or creative. In the disruptive model, a new technology disrupts whole companies or industries. For example, consider the impact of the Model T Ford and mass car production on the horse and coach industry. Alternatively, Innovations can be a source of creative destruction, coming in ways of economic growth sustained by new products and means of production that progressively supplant the existing. BIM can be viewed as a source of creative destruction, slowly supplanting CAD and other ways of working, but without significantly disrupting the industry as a whole. It is likely that the disruptive power of BIM sits with clients who can use BIM specifications to force industry to behave differently. Something that has been achieved at Sydney Opera House and that we also see in the United Kingdom where the government has driven the adoption of BIM. 
In both of these examples, we see the value of case studies in demonstrating the benefits of using BIM for FM. And to a final thought, do you have a BIM for FM project that would make an interesting case study? If so, please contact me to discuss writing up and publishing your project.